Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's episode of Shape Unplugged. I am your host, Stephanie Morris, CEO of Shape America. And today I have a very special guest joining us, Dr. Paul Rukavina, who is the chair of our research council at Shape America. And he's also professor and graduate director of physical education at Adelphi University. So hi, Paul. Thanks so much for being our guest today. How's your summer been? I had a great summer. Um, I have a 14 month um, old baby right now, or I guess toddler. And um, this summer got to watch him grow up. And, um, and so that's, that's been a pleasure. We went to the beach. Um, he's now, we, his nickname is Hurricane Jacks. And because he goes around just taking everything out of all the all his toys out and everywhere he goes, it just like leave a, a field of debris. And so it's, 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 it's a blessing <laughs> to have a toddler around and to have that energy and um, type of thing. And, um, but it, I'm excited to get back to school um, this summer, I think with the Shape of America and you were on one of the calls, Stephanie, was the, it was the equity, diversity and inclusion thing and so I got all stimulated um, with the, the cultural competence and thinking about inclusion and so I hosted um, for all our adjuncts and our professors uh, a cultural competency teaching kind of a professional development and we invited um, several of our professors and other people that we know on it and we did this professional development they presented and we talked about practical strategies that we could incorporate into um, our classroom our you know we, we the k through 12 strategies to um, to give to our um, pre-service teachers and and so we we're thinking about how to thread it through our whole program because most of it is in our social foundations class. And then it, from there we can thread it and make it a theme throughout our program. So I, I was all excited um, from, from that EDI training, so. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm so glad to hear that. You know, I really got a lot out of that training as well. And I've heard such good feedback from so many others, but I really appreciate you sharing that. And um, especially that example of sort of how you are building on that training and carrying it forward. So that's fantastic. Thank you. and. That's awesome about um, having a 14 month old. Um, I remember those days all too well. It's a lot of work, but I'm so glad that you all have had a great summer. Um, I am sure that many of our listeners are probably really curious about Shape America's program councils. And for those listening who aren't familiar with them, we have five, health education, research, which of course Paul chairs, physical activity, physical education, and professional preparation. So can you please share with our listeners, Paul, a little bit about your council? What are your priorities and major activities right now? And how are you serving SHAPE and the HPE community? So the Research Council um, is uh, one of the major arms of, of a SHAPE America. And it, it provides, we, what we do is we provide the professional development um, or the information that teachers and physical activity professionals and coaches and health school health professionals um, that they can take this um, information that's generated um, using the scientific method and then they can um, take that information back to their classrooms to work with their children in more effective ways of having this new information that's been generated. And so what we do um, is um, we go through a process every year of selecting some key lecturers um, that have studied for 30 years. Most of them are, you know, are those type of caliber people. And they, they will talk about their career and all of what they've learned on us you know, a specific topic. And we have the, the McCloy lecture. Um, we have the Weiss lecture. Um, we have the, um, the Shape America Scholar. And so each of these three people that will be at the Shape NOLA, they um, will have some like very interesting insights, you know, from 
years of experience studying this stuff and um, being able to present. And the other thing that we do is, is each year people present or submit abstracts and we go through a process of organizing the review of abstracts um, of these um, new information that we get that the different researchers are doing and then in being able to present that. Uh, I think one of the, um, the big things that we're excited about this year is, is that we're thinking about um, how we can engage school health education um, and engage a lot more higher education faculty um, into, the, into the process. I love that. And you know, as you were talking about those amazing lectures that, that take place um, because of the Research Council, I was reminded of the one given by Darla Castelli last year at virtual convention. What a pleasure to hear her speak. And um, it was just incredibly interesting. And we got such good feedback, not just on hers, but on all the lectures delivered, of course, um, thanks to the Research Council. So thank you for sharing a little bit about that. And speaking of conventions, as we look ahead to this next year and shape NOLA and so many things ahead, what are you most hopeful for in terms of the impact that your council will make? Um, like I said, we're involved in making sure that we get good information to serve as that professional development for our K through 12 and our coaches and our health educators. Um, and, and so I think that's the big thing is to really encourage um, people to engage in the research and and um, we, we also have the McKenzie grant I, I forgot to talk about and uh, and what and so Thomas Tom McKenzie uh, uh, is providing some grant funding so that we on the topic of I think he is in the physical education um, and uh, exercise and fitness related. And so there, there's that presentation I think is happening um, or if it's gonna happen next year, but um, it, it, that will be um, presented as well in that area that's, that's supported by him. Yeah, I'm really excited for the McKinsey Grant recipients and can't wait to see who wins them this next year because that's such a, a great way that um, we can see impact being made in our community. So thank you for mentioning that. And we, hopefully this will encourage some of our listeners to think about applying for those, for sure. So speaking of applying and participating and engaging, uh, many may be wondering how they can participate and serve on a council. So I'm here to share with everybody that indeed the call for volunteer leader applications for council positions, emerging leader innovation team positions, and our Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Committee is live. It is out there right now. If you go to our website, you'll find it under the Get Involved tab. Um, it's open for the next four weeks. Uh, deadline is October 15th. But in the meantime, Paul, can you share a little bit about what you are most looking for, uh, what your council rather is most looking for in a member of the Research Council? What should potential applicants know about serving on your respective council? So most of the people on the research council are um, researchers that have been serving um, probably six or seven, eight years um, and done a large number of research on a particular area. And then on the council, we have um, people from different areas like such as motor behavior, physical education, um, school health, um, physical activity. And so we kind of look for a diverse um, uh, uh, viewpoints um, or different areas of research um, where they can provide their perspective um, in being able to inform, you know, the different activities that we do. Um, we also have uh, uh, represented from the board um, of Shape America, and we also have a graduate student. And we really value the graduate student being on there um, 
because they have a different perspective than you know the person that the associate professor that that's been in there and they can see research activities from a beginner standpoint and from a graduate student as they're trying to um, build their career. Um, but for the graduate student, it, it's very helpful to be on this because you get to have access um, to all these professors make this connection. And it's, it's likely that you might, you know, be applying for a job at one of these different universities. And if you know someone on the from your activities in the Research Council, um, that's, that's, that's a good thing. What the research to the graduate um, student does is, is they're in charge of doing the unlock um, with, uh, I think Larry Locke started it years ago. And, um, and it's just now, you know, the Research Council has been kind of being the impetus for that. And every month, um, the, um, our graduate student representative will review a research um, article and then write it in such a way that practitioners can understand. Because a lot of times, you know, the some of the language gets a little, a little technical, but the graduate student puts it in terms of, okay, this is usable information. Uh, and, and so that's that kind of thing. And so what we look for is, um, you know, someone that's interested in promoting research and, but the minimal um, uh, for the professors, the minimal, you need to be a, a research council uh, fellow, we shape America fellow and um, ha be active with um, reviewing the abstracts, submitting abstracts, going to the convention. And so someone that is really active in Shape America is really what we, we look for on that. And, you know. I love that. And I must add that I just had the privilege of reading the next Unlocked, Unlock Research rather, um, and I loved it. It's about proficiency barriers and the, the importance of um, helping our youth really gain competency and how to move so that they enjoy movement and um, just spoke to a great piece of research and really enjoyed it. So it's one of my personal favorite pieces that we publish. I hope everybody listening makes sure to check it out. And my sincere thanks to the Research Council for making sure that those pieces um, are part of our content pipeline and available to our community. So Paul, thank you so much again for joining us. Um, we really appreciated hearing a little bit about the Research Council today. I hope that we sparked some interest in, um, in listeners out there for getting involved both with the Research Council and also considering applying for all of our program councils. And thank you again for your time. Any final words for our listeners today? Um, yes, um, we for Shape America, we have a couple wonderful journals that um, are out there. So it's the Research Quarterly for Exercise and Sport, uh, which is the you know, the multidisciplinary research papers, but we also have the JOFERT, um, the Journal of Physical Education, Recreation and Dance, which is really practical articles based upon, you know, textbooks and the research that's been out there. And then there's strategies, which are great strategies you can use. And so um, get into those because it can really help you be a better professional. Um, and we love that. Oh, thank you so much for the plug for the journals. I couldn't agree with you more. And I'll add the American Journal for Health Education as well is a really, right, of course, really a big one for us that we're so proud of. And the reach of those journals is incredible. I mean, just we could not be prouder of the circulation and the impact they've made. And again, our thanks to past and current members of the Research Council for the many articles we know that they have authored to make those journals possible. So that is our episode of Shape Unplugged today. Thank you to everybody who tuned in. Thank you again to Dr. Paul Rukavina at Adelphi University, Chair of the Research Council at Shape America for his time and uh, willingness to chat with us a little bit today. And I hope that everybody tunes in next time. Thanks so much.